Many observers feel the news media coverage of the response to the George Floyd killing has hit new extremes, sometimes under internal pressure. Fox News media analyst and host of Fox's Media Buzz, Howard Kurtz, has some examples tonight. New York Times editorial pages are relentlessly liberal and anti-Trump, but many staffers are rebelling over yesterday's op-ed about the nationwide protests by Republican Senator Tom Cotton titled, Send in the Troops. Black Times journalists are especially offended. Nicole Hannah-Jones of the Times Magazine, who worked on the paper's 1619 slavery project, as a black woman, as a journalist, as an American, I am deeply ashamed that we ran this. Jenna Wortham, running this put black New York Times staffers in danger. Roxanne Gay, his piece was inflammatory in endorsing military occupation, as if the Constitution doesn't exist. But are an op-ed page is supposed to foster debate? Editorial page editor James Bennett says it's important to run counter arguments, though we understand that many readers find Senator Cotton's argument painful, even dangerous. Publisher A.G. Salzberger said today he backs the principle of openness to a range of opinions, even those we may disagree with. They've stood up to the woke progressive mob in their own newsroom, so I, I commend them for that. The media are overwhelmingly critical of Trump's handling of the protests, often in harsh language. Washington Post editorial, Trump's threats to deploy troops move America closer to anarchy. The New Yorker, Donald Trump's fascist performance. The president, meanwhile, has assailed coverage of the protest. If you watch fake news CNN or MSDNC, you would think that the killers, terrorists, arsonists, anarchists, thugs, hoodlums, looters, Antifa, and others would be the nicest, kindest, most wonderful people in the whole wide world. We couldn't find anyone on those networks praising killers, arsonists, or thugs. But Nicole Hannah-Jones did say this to CBS. Violence is when an agent of the state kneels on a man's neck until all of the life is leached out of his body. Destroying property which can be replaced is not violence. Tom Cotton could have made his case anywhere, but as Bennett says, Times readers might not have seen it or been able to challenge it. As for the op-ed page, it's back to business as usual today with a column titled No More Lynching and another by Stacey Abrams. Brett? Howie, thanks. And some breaking news. Literally just moments ago, a spokesman for The New York Times tweeted regrets for publishing that op-ed, apparently referring to the Tom Cotton piece, Senator Tom Cotton. This apology reads, we've examined the piece and the process leading up to its publication. This review made clear that a rushed editorial process led to the publication of an op-ed that did not meet our standards. As a result, we're planning to examine both short-term and long-term changes to include expanding our fact-checking operation and reducing the number of op-eds we publish. Again, this is an op-ed from a Republican senator from Arkansas. That's not the only apology tonight. New Orleans Saints quarterback Drew Brees is apologizing for saying he opposes kneeling during the national anthem. Brees says his comments were, quote, insensitive and completely missed the mark. Brees was roundly criticized by other professional athletes after comments, and he was cursed by some protesters in New Orleans. Brees, by the way, was one of the biggest supporters of charities for communities hit hard by Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans.